Hi, you guys. Welcome. Welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker and welcome to Show and Tell 67. So I am a little today. I, uh, Wednesday had a really bad incident at the grocery store. Um, we were at 91% humidity high. It was, the temperature was in the eighties with a heat index of the upper eighties. It just worked out. And as I was walking through the grocery store, I couldn't breathe through my mask and started getting lightheaded and faint, which started making me feel claustrophobic, which made me feel panicked. So it was a re reinforcing negativity moment uh, for me. And since then, I've actually kind of felt like I've been sick, almost uh, very. So if I seem off today, I am. Uh, that's also why I didn't film yesterday on Thursday and have my normal show and tell upload on Thursday. And why I'm coming to you on Friday morning instead. So, where to start? Where to start? First off, I finished my third citrus dishcloth. I should have brought the other two down so I could show them to you as a set. Maybe if I do the face uh, or uh, dish scrubbies or face scrubbies to go with it, I'll bring everything down and show you the whole set finished. But I did get that done. It's just lemon peel stitch with one row of single crochet going around the whole thing in the base color and then a row of single crochet in the contrasting color. I don't count my stitches. I just literally look at it and go, ooh, that looks about right. I forgot to bring my notebook down with the name of this hat, but I will have it linked down below. And this is using the Crayola Lion Brand yarn in uh, Aquamarine. Super duper simple hat. I think it took me like two hours to whip up. That would, that, you move into front post treble crochets on it and it just flies. Um, this is a Ross hat using the same yarn, except this one is sepia. Uh, I've had a couple of people ask me if I'd be willing to review Ross's pattern. I don't think it really needs a review. I think everybody needs a really good basic vanilla beanie in their arsenal because you can take a vanilla beanie and zhuzh it up. You can add texture stitches to it. You can play with textures and yarns with it. I've done scrap ones where you hold um, different like novelty yarns with your base yarn. Um, there are so many things you can do based off a really good vanilla hat pattern. And because Ross published the pattern with multiple weights of yarn, I would say it's an excellent option to make your go-to vanilla beanie. It's very well written. It's simple. It's straightforward. Boom. That's, that's my review. <laughs> it's a really good vanilla beanie. Um, I do love this yarn though. Oh, by the way, he's got really nice decrease. He wrote a really nice decrease with that. It's a nice gradual decrease, which I love. Texture hats, I like a, a quicker, more rapid decrease that shows the pattern more. For a basic hat, I like the gradual decrease for some reason. That's just me. That's that's me being picky. That's me being extra. Um, For this... I made a matching cowl. I used the same three by two rib up here, worked in stocking it till I got sick of it <laughs> and went back to the rib. Um, here. From here down is the rest of the yarn from the hat. Actually see where the, oh, oh. and from here up is most of another ball. I had a, or another cake. I had a ball about that big that is um, one of the darker browns. You can see there's actually three shades of darker brown, tan, and then kind of like off-white with brown specks. <clears throat> For something like this, I really like the way it looks like stripes. In both the hat and the scarf, it looks like plan stripes it, because the color changes are so long in the round you get this very nice smooth same thing with the blue one striping I mean you can't really tell unless you're looking for it that's where this color changed 
that's where this color changed but you have to really look for it in the round otherwise it just looks like a beautiful stripe I like it I was very happy with these and the other thing I finished oh 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 wait 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 the the pièce de résistance for the week can wait <laughs> um so a couple weeks ago I told you I was making are going to try to remember to make um, three row granny squares out of any of my very, very tiny scrap balls. This is what I've come up with so far. I think this is what I'm going to use for my blanket. I'm going to do a four patch, border it, and then join those out into a blanket. I think that's what I'm going to do. I have not decided yet if I'm going to join in the granny stitch with white or just slip stitch these together yet. That, I haven't gotten that far. I wish I had broken this up instead of just doing a square. But this is um, part of the Aquamarine Royal Purple Timberwolf. That's part of the Royal Purple. And that's the Blossom Off list that I did my Just Feel Festive Shawl with last week. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I did that. I sewed that together last night. I still, I am a really bad sewer by hand. But I got these done this morning. I got two full, and this is a tickled pink Timberwolf. And then I got two two rounds. And one one round. It's so tiny. I don't know. I don't have the patience to sew these little like one inch guys together. But just how cute are these? I think they're so precious. They're so cute. I mean, the funny thing is, is like, I'm weaving in my ends as I go. So like, I don't have extra finishing work at the end of the day, but I have no problem making them to build off of them. But I don't think I have the patience to build an entire blanket out of these. Granted, I never thought I'd be trying to do a three round granny blanket either. Because that, that, those are small squares too. I mean, that's three inch. That's closer. Two and a half inch, maybe squares. Yeah. I mean, those are still. Itty bitty. Anyway. So a couple weeks ago, Rose Likes Crochet was doing an unboxing for her wishes for wings. And somebody had sent in a shawl that was in a chevron shape. And she had like, oh my God, what's the pattern? I love this. I need to I need to be able to make one of my own. And Jennifer from Cinnamon Stitches actually replied in the comments with the link to the pattern. And it's the Alana wrap or Alana shawl from Premiere. I instantly printed it like the day Rose posted that video. And then last week, Jennifer did a tutorial on it, celebrating Premiere yarns for her Premiere week. And I was just getting started on mine. So this is using the Lion Brand Crayola yarn. And like I said, it's Timberwolf, Tickle, Tickle Me Pink, and Royal Purple. This just came off of the blocking mats. I do want to show you a before and after picture though. Well, I guess this is your after, but. Um, I did the color rose at random. The only thing I pre-planned in doing this was I wanted this end to be more gray and this end to be more pink and purple. And I'm really, really pleased with how that turned out. So I did block this. I blocked it very, very firmly. I wanted to open up the stitches, get about six extra inches in length. And because I didn't want to border it, I wanted to ensure that my edge was very, very smooth. Now, I had some curling, as you can see here, and that's after me trying to, like, lay it out and make it look nice. This is it pinned out, so you can see the dramatic difference in the way the stitches look and the shape of it. Steamed it, let it cool off, and now I have a perfectly smooth uh, seven-foot shawl, which is what I wanted. <coughs> because of the shape being irregular, you do need to take it a little bit longer than you normally would for just like a rectangular wrap 
because you are losing some of the distance between the peaks and the the peak edge and the point edge. I've not trimmed my ends. I wove them in before I blocked it. And, uh, yeah. But now it's more than enough that I could pin it above my shoulder. Have a nice warm wrap. It's a little bit uh, more drapey because of the steam. Uh, it softens the fabric even more. But I love it. I love the way it turned out. It turned out perfect. It turned out exactly how I had planned it to be without planning it. So very excited. Very, very excited. This is a mad, stupid, simple pattern to do. It's like the Just Feel Festive shawl, where as soon as you get started on it, you have the pattern memorized. So it's great for taking around with you. It's great for sitting there watching TV when you don't want to be so absorbed in the pattern. You don't, I mean, like Troy and I have spent a lot of time indoors watching movies and television series recently, and I want it to be present in the moment, but still able to knit and crochet. So I've been doing a lot of very simple projects that are very repetitive and mindless, but keep my hands busy at the same time. So definitely a pattern to consider for that. Um, that's all my finished objects. So I'm still working on the Pale Moon shawl. I am trying to take it slow because I'm enjoying the make and I want to continue to enjoy it. Um, there's something. Oh, I pulled out my sweater and started. That was Tuesday night. Um, I had started looking at doing the sleeves and just with feeling bad the last two days, I have not progressed at that at all. Sorry, it's still early, so I'm still drinking my coffee. Um, but I think those are my only two big projects I worked on at all. I still have, like, my socks that I'm working on and the race smoke out. There are other things that are unfinished objects floating around, but they're not in the UFO category yet. Um... I don't have any big spectacular plans for the weekend. I don't have any real plans for next week's projects yet. I don't think there's really anything exciting. I did get a couple cards 90% made. So hopefully I'll get more progress on those and be able to share those next week. Um, yeah. Once again, you know, not having acquisitions make... If I don't editorialize too much, <laughs> it makes my videos quite short. Um, oh, I do have a story for you guys. I was so mad. So as part of the move, our movers took my Ikea bookcases and filled the shelves with stuff, wrapped them in plastic wrap, and moved them. So over the course of all that shuffling and moving, it jimmied the sides wide apparently so even though my shelf seemed stable and seemed right it wasn't quite even and it wasn't quite catching the pegs on the inside that well so the other night I was in the guest room turned around and looked to realize that I was like my top shelf is and all I had on there was like glass Christmas balls it wasn't like heavy stuff and then I looked down and realized the second shelf is knocked down too. So I had to clear everything off that bookshelf and move it all into the craft room. After I'd spent all that effort in trying to clean it last week. So I had a whole nother round of, okay, so where else can I put this? Where else can I put this? Is there anything I can break down? Is there something that can be moved? So I finally got all of the holiday stuff actually in the craft room, which is, was a goal for by the end of the year anyway, that I would have enough room to start using like the underside of the desk cube storage to start storing holiday stuff. Right now, that's where I have Christmas, my Christmas card stock, stickers, things like that. Um, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Easter are all in the closet but I had enough room in there to put those on the bottom shelves of the not paper crafting bookcase. So it's like after all that work and trying to make it nice and neat in here 
and having things in sensical homes, I ended up having to go through and reorganize and pull things out, move things around. And it was like, really? I was so proud of myself. But I do have a new haul here after using eight balls. And I have one more brown. I'm just going to probably tonight make another one of these hats. Um... But I'll, I'll knock that out, that, that extra ball out real quick. Um, I am going to film a review on this. That was one of the requested reviews. I have not forgotten the Plymouth review or the Cascade review. I haven't started working on them because I just, I wasn't in the mood to make hats for a while there. So hopefully that is sitting upstairs in the same basket this was in. So hopefully I will get rolling on that soon. But I am enjoying some of the other projects I've been working on, like my Just Feel Festive shawls. And I think I'm going to make another one of these. Um, I'm not sure what I want to use for another one yet. I am actually considering doing a alternating cake pattern, similar to how my um, Cakes to Detango shawl was done. Um, and I have, you know, a glorious assortment of options that I can use. Um, so yeah, I might, might play with something like that. I'm not sure. We'll play it by ear. See how I'm doing. See how I feel. I'm hoping I've got two, two more videos I'd really like to get filmed today. I don't know when all they're all going to go up or anything else, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have had a fantastic week. I hope you have an amazing weekend. And I look forward to seeing you guys real soon. Bye, guys. Love you.